Issue 275. Sonic wastes valuable time trying to make an annoying, dramatic speech against Sigma that just serves to recap to us that he's got an army, when that's what the recap pages are for. Fortunately, reality ensues because Sigma wasn't listening and didn't respond. Sonic asks for someone I don't care about to get Sigma's attention with an attack. Well, at least there's a lightning storm in the background to set the mood. Hey, wait a minute! Why the fuck would all these robots get struck by lightning? Not to mention Bunny. You don't even have to be a robot to get hit by lightning. You just have to be unlucky. I want to care about these RPG characters, but the plot itself isn't giving me any deep personalities for them. There's a giant panel of all the heroes rushing at the giant Sigma, and if I wasn't reviewing this, I wouldn't care enough to stare at it for so long to try to see everything going on at once. It's too overwhelming. Billy Hatcher rolls a giant egg, throwing off the serious mood of the scene. An explosion happens above him, with the characters from Okami using their magic to help out. I hope he'll be given something interesting to say instead of just describing what's clearly happening, because this isn't motivating me to type about it. Nothing about this is creative. Ryu's surprised at seeing his mortal enemy, who has to tell him that yes, they're gonna team up. I know there's no chance of the heroes losing or even getting injured, so why should I care about any of this? Especially if he doesn't focus on any character long enough. There's no surprises. I thought it earlier, but Shadaloo sounds so silly. It completely broke the tone it was trying to go for every time he said it. Why would he say that when he's trying to be intimidating? Meanwhile, Eggman says while hiding they doesn't see any defenses, and Wily's assumed that Sigma thought he killed them by attacking the Sky Patrol. Won't he have killed the Zeddy too since they were in the brig? Xander thinks he's gonna sacrifice Eggman Wily to get his destiny. We didn't have to be spoiled on that. So he's not actually gonna help Eggman Wily in the end. Does he want to rewrite reality with the Master Engine? At least reality rewriting is kinda justified here because it's powered by the magical energy of two entire planets. Speaking of that, Eggman plans to make him reality just for revenge on Loop. Of course, because realistically that's the only way a reality recreated by Eggman would be. It wouldn't be Sonic 1, that's way too lighthearted for him. And it certainly wouldn't involve the main heroes being able to bother him. Also, these guys aren't idiots for trusting Xander because they're just desperate and don't think they have any other choice right now. And his lie was convincing enough. Though it did get me suspicious when he said that they didn't even like his destiny. The heroes keep attacking metal things. It's the same end result every time, so I don't think it matters if I talk about how they do it in every panel. I'm only looking at each panel for like a second, that's how boring it is. There's no tension here. It's just the characters attacking stuff unopposed. What made things change from when they were getting pummeled? They should still be massively outnumbered. Again, I don't care about any of these characters. I don't hate them or like them right now. The only great thing about this boar fest is that there's barely any dialogue slowing it down. Which is good because it's all just padding. If all of the characters are essentially telling the same story, which is their team as a whole is defeating the robots, then why can't that story end faster? I'd much rather just focus on Sonic so I could at least get a sense of progression and be told a story from it instead of a dozen random events. Sigma's breaking apart, but of course they didn't do it, because the story's not even halfway done yet. Finally, Stig's paranoia is taken advantage of because she's suspicious. She says smartly that they only stopped some of the Mavericks, so he should still be getting power, and she was happy to be proven right. And I don't blame her because she almost never gets that. So Sigma flies upwards and brags, saying redundant, menacing, bad guy dialogue. So two dragons threaten him, and he shoots eye lasers at one of them. It's definitely less boring seeing the heroes get hit than the robots. At least the main villain of this arc gets to be a big physical threat on his own at the end instead of a giant machine being effortlessly owned because of Supersonic, and so it was never actually a danger. I'm glad one of the protagonists of Okami said that he blocked the Celestial Brush, because I wouldn't have known what that was otherwise. You shouldn't be surprised, he's got a lot of magic in him now. Him getting magic from a planet to power up rips off Final Fantasy VII. He sends them away with a shockwave. Of course, Sigma easily stops the skies of Arcadia people too. Although these panels do a crap job telling me what's going on. And he calls a dragon adorable sarcastically before making it fall. Now it's less boring because the plot's focused on one character. And he's the bad guy creating tension. And at least the crossover character's making the plot better by being a lot of people there to get hit by Sigma. Sally says that it's time for their trump card. 
I wish it was said that the reason Sonic didn't go super right away was because it only lasts for a limited amount of time. So they have to save it until the end. But I guess that's supposed to be the reason. He tells Megman to go with him to the Emeralds. It was nice of Crane to say that everyone is brave in helping her guard them. Sigma starts walking towards them all idiotically slowly. And Sonic is also a frustrating moron because he wastes time telling Mega Man what Emeralds are, which he could have done earlier. And obviously in all that time, Sigma would have killed them. No, I guess he wasn't heading directly for Sonic. That's possible because there's so many people. So he could have been heading for somebody else. Still, you think he would have killed somebody in all this time? I wish they didn't drag out them going super and pretend that Sigma was about to win. We're almost done. Sadly, there's an issue after this, when this really feels like the finale, which only proves how bad this writer is at pacing. How did he think we'd get anything out of seeing these characters just beat robots in one hit, without showing a personality? This issue is by Ian Flynn, and it's about the Sega heroes fighting robots the whole time, boring the hell out of me from no tension and no focus on one particular character to have an actual story, and not just a series of random events. Finally, there's an actual plot when Sigma gets a bunch of hits in, and the heroes go super, but never mind, the story ends there. I know Sigma had a big army, but still, shorten it a bit. This issue could have easily been the finale of the arc. It could have gotten away with injuring the crossover characters, at least.